morning, everyone. I am Paula and today is May 31st. It is the last day of our challenge for the month of May. If you are new here, I had a challenge for the month of May. I actually did two challenges. I did a fitness challenge and a carnivore challenge. And I did um, a lot of fitness. I have really increased my fitness in this past month and I've gotten motivated and I want to continue to stay that way. Um, I've been taking long walks. I have been wearing a weighted vest, which really helps burn calories. There's a lot of health benefits with a weighted vest. Um, bone density helps with a lot of different things. So I have been doing what I like to call a relaxed carnivore diet over the past Actually, I started a week before May, so five weeks I have been doing a relaxed carnivore. And what that is, I have been eating all animal products, meat, eggs, and dairy. And I also included some spices and some stevia. And um, I'm going to give you my results for this challenge. All right. So when I first started out on this challenge, I was not so sure because the first couple of weeks I actually gained weight. Um, I didn't really want to talk about it on here because here I am leading a challenge and I'm gaining weight. So I really struggled with the scale the first few weeks that I was on this. I am a person that likes to weigh myself every few days. I've always been that way just to kind of keep myself in check. I have learned that when you are on a high protein diet, it doesn't always reflect on the scale because you're holding on to your muscle, you're losing fat, your body composition is changing. And um, I've tried my best and I'm still working on it on just kind of stepping away from the scale and going more toward body measurements. I have my measuring tape right here. So in the beginning, the first couple of weeks, I actually gained almost three pounds. And I literally started to almost panic because um, that's, you know, that's not the results that I wanted, right? So I stepped away from the scale for a couple of weeks and I, I did take my measurements at the beginning of the month. I have been trying to keep my measurements updated every month so that I can go by my inches. So I measured myself and then I stayed off of the scale. So today I want to tell you um, my results for this carnivore challenge. Um, I got on the scale this morning for the first time in probably two and a half to three weeks. And I am back to the weight <laughs> that I started at the beginning of this challenge. So I gained almost three pounds and now I'm back to that 179. I'm almost persuaded that my weight is going to be 179 for the rest of my life. It's been at 179 for so long. Um, but I got my measuring tape out and I actually lost three inches this month. So that goes to tell you that you cannot always rely on the scale when you are on a high protein diet. There was a gain. I did gain weight on carnivore. I was really kind of like, freaked out. I was kind of freaked out that I was seeing the scale go up as I was doing carnivore. So I want to encourage you that if this is something that you are wanting to do or you're doing it and you might have gained some weight and you started freaking out and you stopped or you are thinking about doing it and you start to gain weight, it happened to me. I did gain weight, but I went back to the weight that I was before. So I was hoping to get a little bit lower than 179 just because I want to break that because that's where I seem to fall. fall. But um, I'm okay with that because overall I did end up losing inches. So now I'm going to talk to you about the way I feel. Um, from the very beginning, because I think I transitioned from pretty much ketovore, um, I was already pretty low in carbs. Uh, I didn't have like any keto flu or, you know, nothing like that. I didn't have any uh, fatigue. If you go to something like this from a standard American diet, the transition might be a little rougher. I smoothly transitioned into it. So if you're thinking about going carnivore 
and you just don't want to go right into it. Maybe you want to do like I did and start keto and then slowly lower your carbs and then work your way into carnivore. It seemed to work really well for me as far as I didn't have any kind of symptoms of like flu or anything like that. So I felt great from day one. I felt a lot of energy. I still feel a lot of energy. I, uh, I did things this month that I don't normally do as far as walking the distances that I did with the weighted vest. There was a couple times when I made uh, little short videos over on Instagram where I was walking and I was like, I literally felt like at one point, um, maybe two weeks into it that I could run. Like I had so much energy. I felt like I was walking really fast and I felt myself like with that moment, I'm like, I really think I could jog. I've never been a runner. I've never been one to do running. It's just like not my thing. But at certain points when I was walking and I'm feeling really good, I felt like I could just take off. And you all know, we did a vlog video of our garage sale weekend. Um, we had three days of garage sailing. Plus we had a few days before that setting up, which was a lot. And you know, Ed has his injury. So I had to do a lot of things that normally he would do. Um, also, uh, my grandkids came, three of my grandsons came the day that our yard sale ended. And then they were here for a couple of nights, stayed for three days, and I played hard, high action with them the entire time they were here. And I had so much energy during that time. So my energy has been amazing. My sleep at night has been incredible. I've been sleeping like a rock. I haven't had any gut issues. I have mental clarity. I feel so, so good. Because of that, I'm gonna continue going on with the fitness. I'm gonna be eating very heavy meat-based like I have been for the past five weeks. I am going to dial back on the dairy amounts. I'm gonna include dairy still. Um, I think it would make me really sad if I just completely cut dairy out, but um, I'm just going to dial it back a little bit on the amount that I'm taking in. I am going to continue with intermittent fasting. Now that I've been doing this for 30 plus days and I feel great, I'm going to go into what most people would call ketovore, that is adding in just a few berries because it's summertime and I wanna have a strawberry here and there. Um, I'm gonna probably have some onions and some pickles. Um, not so sure about anything else. I'm not really craving like green beans or lettuce or salad or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to add a couple of things in and see how my body responds. I have learned to listen to the cues in my body. And if I wake up with stiff fingers or stiff toes, that's usually where I notice it the most at first is in my fingers and in my toes, the stiffness. If I wake up and I feel that way, I'm going to think about what I added in the day before, and maybe that will be something that I can't have. So definitely very heavy, meat-based, adding in just a couple of more little things, dialing back on the dairy, doing the intermittent fasting, and um, that's what I'm gonna do. So not necessarily a challenge for the month of June, but I am going to be eating that way and I'm going to be doing a lot of what I eat in a days to show you what I'm adding in and we'll see how it goes. I'll let you know how, how I feel, that kind of thing. Really happy with my results. I was really kind of freaked out in the beginning, um, but it all worked itself out. I talked in my video yesterday about how I have suffered for most of my life with anxiety and how uh, my level of anxiety is really down since I've been eating this way. I know that if I had been weighing myself way back when, that anxiety would have probably been over the top. I probably would have quit recording. I probably would have been like, I'm done with this. But um, I just kept going and um, I seen some results. So I think that the closer you get to your goal weight, the slower that weight loss happens. And I'm okay as long as I'm I'm still getting the results that I want. I have to tell you all something about a non-scale victory. Yesterday, I went to a thrift store and they had a sale. And I picked out a couple of things and I went to the register and my, my two things that I were getting added up to $8. And the lady told me, 
um, that they were having a sale that whatever you can cram into a shopping bag is $10. So I thought, well, I better go and go look around because, you know, I can, I'm already at $8. I may as well go and pick out a few more things. So I went through the store again and I found a pair of Patagonia. Um, I've never owned anything Patagonia because, you know, they're, they're really, it's an expensive brand. They are like, um, like a sporty hiking type pant, kind of like cargo pants, but they have, they don't have the pockets on the legs and um, they were size 10, all right? I cannot remember the last time I was in a size 10. I probably was in high school um, when I wore a size 10. And I just grabbed them because I thought, you know what? If I don't fit into these, I will find somebody that can. It's Patagonia, you know? I know, I know a few friends that probably could wear them. So I got them, I threw them in the washer. I throw everything in the washer that I get from the thrift stores when I come in and I hung them up and I didn't want to put them in the dryer because I thought, well, it'll really shrink up if I put them in the dryer. So I hung them up to dry and I showed them to Ed. And I'm like, these are Patagonia. And Ed's like, okay, he doesn't know what none of that stuff is. So um, I'm like, they're really, it's a really expensive brand. And he told me, well, try them on. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that because I thought it would make me feel bad if I put them on and I only get them up so far, you know? So I took them and hung them in my closet. And then later that day I was in there changing and I just looked up at them and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try those on and see how tight they are because I want to, you know, see if I can wear them later on. Maybe they're too tight now. Maybe I'll be able to get into them later on. And I put them on, y'all. They came right up over the hips because I lost that inch and a half and I buttoned them, zipped them. And now do they fit like a glove? Yes, they fit like a glove. They were not super tight where I had to suck it in to zip them. But, you know, they're a little tighter than what I would wear like out in public, you know, but they went right on. They zipped right up. Maybe if I did some bends, some squats, they stretch out a little bit and then I can wear them. But um, that's, that's, that's a huge thing for me because when I first started this, I was pretty much going into a size 2X. I'm finding that the clothes size is starting to go down even though that scale is staying around the same. So body composition is definitely changing. So I just wanna encourage you, if you are getting on the scale and you don't see much of a change, get one of these. They're not very expensive. In fact, I have a couple of these in different places. Um, take your measurements, mark them down. I have mine in a book, in my planner, mark the date, get your neck, your bust, the, the band under the bust, your waist, your hips at the largest area, each thigh, around each thigh, do your arms. I never took measurements of my arms from the very beginning. So I don't have anything to compare them to. I don't know why I just, I just left that part out, but do your arms and then write them down and keep track of your measurements. And you will see if you're eating this way and you're staying consistent, that's the key is to stay consistent. You're not having cheat meals and you're not doing all this, you know, going off the, off the rails. You will see changes in your inches in your body composition, in your clothes, even though the scale may reflect, it's not changing. If I only relied on the scale, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would probably be pretty down on myself that I'm working really hard and I'm not getting results. So uh, I'm glad that, you know, I took measurements way back when. So um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, get off of here for now. I have some coffee and it's probably gotten cold while I'm sitting here talking. Um, I think the challenge went really well. Um, I was just going to end the video right now and just have it like be a short video, but I think I will continue to film throughout the day today what we're eating. Ed is at physical therapy. He is, um, he just left for do, to do that. Um, and I don't know what we're doing for breakfast yet. I'm sure it's going to be those farm fresh eggs we picked up yesterday. We'll have something with eggs. Um, but, uh, I'll be back to let you know what we're going to be having. I'm going to go ahead and film of what I eat in a day. So my advice, if you are doing this, stay consistent. That is key. Consistency is key. 
Um, you can't expect to achieve results if you're doing this, you know, four or five days a week and then you're going to a birthday party and you're having a piece of chocolate cake and you're having, you know, some fast food because you're busy or, you know, that kind of thing. You can't, you have to stay consistent with it if you want to achieve the optimal results for your body. So consistency, don't give up, persevere, don't give up. It's worth it. It has taken me, I get a lot of people ask me in the comments, how long did it take you to lose your weight? So I've been doing this for over two and a half years now, and I'm still working on that last few pounds. I'm still working on some weight loss. Um, so it's not a quick fix. It's not a fad diet to me. It's just a lifestyle. It's a journey. I'm here for this journey. I'm on this journey and it's going to continually get better and better and better. So, all right, I'll see you when we eat our breakfast. All right, so we are making our first meal right now. I have some bacon going in my air fryer and Ed is getting ready to scramble up some eggs. Get out of the way here. He's getting ready to scramble up some eggs. I told him I just want three scrambled eggs and butter, no cheese, because I am making a savory chaffle in this big Belgian waffle maker. And I'm gonna have a quarter of this with some cream cheese on it. And this already does have some cheese in it. So I'm gonna have that. I will show you here if it's ready. Not quite, but what I did was I mixed two eggs and about three quarters cup of um, shredded Colby Jack cheese. And then I put some everything but the bagel seasoning in there and some bacon bits. And I just put it in this waffle iron and we're gonna have a section of that with some cream cheese on it. So it's kind of like a bagel. All right, look at that. Two pieces of bacon three scrambled eggs in butter with some salt and the a quarter of the Belgian waffle uh, savory chaffle with a little bit of cream cheese on it. Over here I have a Nespresso pod called Malazio. I whipped up a little bit of heavy cream, poured it on top, and I also put my collagen powder in here. I like the Equip unflavored collagen have a discount code for equip where you can save some money uh, that link is down below and i also sprinkled just a little bit of cinnamon on top because i was feeling a little bit fancy so um this is breakfast All right, breakfast was great. Right now I'm having some of the Element sparkling water, the grapefruit. Um, if you've tried these, which one is your favorite? I will tell you that I, the, I like in the powdered packets, the grapefruit is my favorite. I order, when the last time we placed an order, we ordered four boxes of all grapefruit because that's how much we like the grapefruit, but I will say that this is much sweeter than the powdered packets. I think that out of the four flavors, I do like the black cherry just cause it's different, but it's really sweet too. Um, I think I like the citrus salt the best out of the four flavors. So if you're wondering what flavors to try, the citrus salt is delicious. This is really good too, but it's just really sweet. So something that also that I have been doing is usually when I make the element in my water, with the, the packets, I always add in, I have a hair on my face somewhere. I always add in my Lugel's iodine drops. I use four or five drops of that every day. And I've been grabbing these out of the refrigerator and I haven't been doing my iodine for the past few days. And iodine is a great supplement. I'm not telling you to take it. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional. But a big red ball. you should do your, <laughs> You should do your research on the supplement. Um, I take it every day. And so I just remember today to put some in here because I was drinking it out of this. So um, we bought a big red buoy for our swimming area out here. And that's what Ed was talking about, the big red ball, because the boats come in pretty close when the kids are out here swimming. So 
Um, our neighbors two doors down have a few of the balls out and then our neighbor here has a red ball that they put out. We're gonna put a red ball out and that'll keep like a borderline in our swim area to keep those boats and jet skis away from us, especially the little kids when they're swimming. So anyways, that's what we're doing right now. So um, anyways, uh, I was just checking in. I'll be back later when something else happens. I'll see you soon. All right, so we decided for dinner today, we are gonna make pizza in our Kamado grill. Um, a while back, London Sunshine sent us this little adorable green egg Kamado grill, and it runs on charcoal, and it really gives a great flavor to your food, and Ed is getting ready to light this, but recently they sent me this pizza stone. It is a 13-inch pizza stone that fits perfectly into the Kamado, and so today we have decided that we're going to do our chicken crust pizza on the Kamado grill. So Ed's getting ready to light it. We're going to, once it gets going and gets heated up, we're gonna put this on the, the grill and let it heat up too. And then we're going to put my chicken crust pizza on this, make a pizza, and we're gonna cook the crust until it's you know done. We're gonna do it like halfway, flip it through, flip it over, and then we're gonna finish the other half. And then we're gonna put the toppings on and we're gonna have pizza with a charcoal good flavor. So um, this is how he's setting it up. Let me turn the camera around so it'll be easier for you to see. All right, so you put your charcoal in there. He also has some paper underneath and you light it down here. Light the paper. And why is there paper up here? Is there a reason? Okay. So you light it. Woo! Okay, gotta watch that umbrella. All right, we put it on this wooden bench because it was getting a little close to the umbrella on the table stand there. So you just light it like this, let it heat up until the coals are white. It has a nice little grate that fits on top. And then we're gonna set the, I guess you would set the stone on top of the grate, right? Right, and um, so I'm gonna go mix up my pizza crust and get that ready so that it's ready to go on here when this gets all heated up. You can see the coals going in there, fire. All right, we'll be back. All right, so just came inside waiting for the Kamado grill to heat up. And I wanted to take this time to let you know that London Sunshine has a special discount link with a special code, my code, it is low carb i will put it right here on the screen it will also be down in the description under this video it will take you over to their website you will pick what you want to order and use the code low carb i'll add it to your cart put in that code and you will get 10 percent off of your purchase and for a special limited time you will get a free pizza stone with your order all right, I just wanted to mention that, so make sure you look down below in the description for the link. It will be right at the top, okay? All right, so I'm gonna open this real quick just to show you, because I don't wanna let all the heat out. I spread out my crust, there you go. And it is cooking. And when we feel that it has cooked enough through, we're gonna flip it over and cook it on the other side and then we'll add the toppings. All right, we did have a little trouble flipping this over. The chicken crust stuck to the stone, so I should have oiled it before I put the crust down. So we'll know that for next time, but it actually flipped okay after we got it unstuck. And now we're just gonna let these toppings just melt. And I put some mozzarella, some bacon, some um, pepperoni, and just a little bit of onion. And we'll be back. All right, so this is the pizza. It looks delicious. We are also putting a couple of jalapeno cheddar dogs on the grill while it's still hot. I'm gonna slice this up. We're gonna give it a try. So, looks pretty good. Look at that. It's like, um, uh, it feels like regular pizza crust on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. I love that you can pick this chicken crust up and here goes. That's really good. The flies are really bad today. This is 
season of flies. I know, it's terrible. Northern Michigan. We got big black flies here. They're not really biting flies, but they're big. This looks really good. Mm -hmm. It's really good except for the bottom is a little bit burnt. Yeah. My Flavor name. crystals. I think it's really good. Huh? You can taste the charcoal. Almost like a um, like a burger that's been cooked on a charcoal grill. Really good. Having a Zevia. Creamy root beer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, sign off for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this challenge. I have um, a lot of people that have already told me about the results. And um, if you read the comments under my last few videos, of the challenge um there's some really good results i'm really proud of everybody for trying so hard during this challenge and working it takes work it takes discipline good job yep it was really good so as i said i'm going to continue through june with carnivore uh more ketovore because like this right here this would be considered ketovore because of the tomato sauce and a little bit of onion other than that, it would be carnivore. So um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and enjoy our dinner. And I'll be back pretty soon. So make sure you subscribe and do the thumbs up. I might come back too. We'll see. <laughs> it was a greasy thumbs up. Have a great night. God bless.